What's the best theory on UFOs or aliens you've ever heard? The movie, Contact, actually makes a good case that we haven't been visited by UFOs or aliens. Our most powerful broadcasts have traveled at best a few dozen light years from this planet. To put that into perspective, if the Milky Way galaxy was the same size as North America, the Earth would be a speck of dust floating around a knick-knack on a living room table in a house in Arizona. Our most powerful broadcast signals have made it to the end of the driveway, or at best across the street. If there were a hyper-intelligent species two blocks over desperately listening for signs of intelligence in the neighborhood, they wouldn't even know we existed for at least a couple thousand years. When they finally picked up our signal, our first television broadcasts, it would take their response another couple thousand years to arrive here. Seriously so damn interesting. It's actually annoying we won't be alive to see the peak of human technology. I mean, that's kind of good. If you're alive for the peak you'll likely be there for what caused the decline. The premise in Lilo and Stitch, that Earth is a mosquito preserve. That was a classic move. It has kept the aliens away from Earth so long. That if any civilization elsewhere in the universe had the technology to reach us, for any reason, they'd be very likely to be also be able to disguise their presence from our detection methods, i.e. they could observe us close up using nanotech, microscopic biological spacecraft etc. and we'd never know. This theory plays into the zoo hypothesis. They came, they saw, they weren't impressed. Like that time I spent four hours digging a hole and saw a bunch of weird bugs. I probably saw the Brad Pitt of bugs and it just didn't do much for me. That greys aren't fully biological, but rather remotely controlled androids, or that they are biological, but their grey appearance is a suit and not the actual body. Imagine other lifeforms looking at our astronauts saying, here come the marshmallow cyclops creatures again. Forgot to say, I reckon we are very DNA planted here and they come to check on their experiment from time to time. Interdimensional not extraterrestrial. The Gods Themselves by Isaac Asimov is a really interesting take on interdimensional aliens. Also on multiple dimensions in general. Any species advanced enough to find us wouldn't make contact. They'd study us the way we study animals. Ideally with minimal interference. Compare the average abduction story to the way we dart large animals, collect data and leave them to wake a bit groggy and confused but unharmed. Edit. This took off quite a bit more than I expected. I feel like I should be very clear that it's not a theory I completely agree with. I simply think it's an interesting idea that tends to create discussions. I just threw it in the ring to see what would happen. I agree with a lot of the criticism of it actually. But that's kind of the point. I used to wholeheartedly agree with this theory. But after much discussion, debate and reflection my views have changed. But it's a good jumping off point. So put us in cages and add us to their intergalactic zoo? Maybe we are already there. They come from the ocean, not space. This sort of reminds me of the plot of The Castaways, an episode from the 1950s radio show X-1. The US government is conducting nuclear tests off an island in the Pacific. The local tribe, rather than be relocated, commits mass suicide by marching into the ocean. Turns out, they were merely returning to their spaceship, which had been submerged for hundreds of years underwater after crash landing on Earth without fuel to get back home. One of the nuclear scientists overseeing the tests was actually a member of the tribe, who had infiltrated society to help humans develop nuclear technology. He steals a bomb in order to fuel their trip home. It's a cool story. The best two I've heard. We don't allow ourselves to contact lost tribes in the Amazon or other wild places. Extraterrestrials may have similar laws on a galactic scale. We split the atom, but made weapons out of them instead of trying to reach the stars. They leave us alone out of fear that we'll destroy ourselves if war accidentally breaks out. That damn prime directive. There are so many star systems with potentially inhabitable planets out there that the chances that we have been the only life in the universe is extremely slim. The question, instead, is whether life arising elsewhere has managed to survive destruction and remain alive today such that they might be able to contact us. That is to say, there have probably been countless civilizations for the past several billion years that simply haven't made it. This is our most likely answer in my opinion. Other planets dinosaurs. Aliens don't necessarily mean an intelligent civilization. Yeah, alien, just means a living organism not from Earth. So if we found a plant, fungus, protozoa, bacteria, etc. on another planet, it would be an alien. 
Yeah but still, imagine we find a mushroom on another planet. Wouldn't be as cool or as scary as meeting with an humanoid civilization, but asterisk asterisk still asterisk asterisk. All the UFO sightings throughout history are just humans from the future on a time-traveling safari meant to observe how we were in the past. They are supposed to keep out of sight, but thanks to human, mechanical errors there have been hiccups with their cloaking which have resulted in being seen. That's why there have always been so many reports of them throughout history, but there has never been an attack. It's just us. Also the reason why we don't see many as many examples of UFOs now even through pretty much everyone has a camera is because people are not that interested in this time period since we already document aspects of human life all the time. You should read Ray Bradbury's short story, A Sound of Thunder. You'll love it. It's about a tourist from the future who does something like this, but with unintended consequences. 10 minute read and we'll worth it. UFOs are higher dimensional objects moving through our dimension. Like, if we moved a 3D object through 2D space, to a 2D being it would look crazy weird. A hollow sphere would start as a dot, then look like a hola hoop that starts small, gets big, then small again. They'd have no idea what they were looking at. So WTF would a higher dimension object look like passing through our 3D dimension? It might rapidly change shape or appear to move at incredible speed as the, whatever, moved through our space-time. Gravity wouldn't affect it, I don't think. It wouldn't appear to have any form of propulsion. Aliens landed once in Africa, got eaten by lions. Planet now marked as dangerous by the galactic feds. That explains why Australia never has sightings. That life in the universe could be so unrecognizable to us that we wouldn't even register it as being alien life. What if life on another world was not carbon-based, but another element? How would we even know what to look for since our definitions and descriptions of life are based on a completely different perspective? The universe is so big and who knows what kind of chain of events and chemical, or even not chemical, reactions went down on the other side that led to a creation of species that behave completely different than ours. It's why I find it so weird that people think you can't have life without water. It's kinda understandable at the same time as it's sometimes hard to imagine things outside of our scope of understanding. There is a very simple explanation as to why abductees independently described grey aliens as looking the same. There are no aliens and no abduction took place, but rather they are abstracting residual memories left over from being infants and looking up at adults. Before an infant's visual cortex is fully developed, an adult human looking down at them would appear rounded and grey in color with large eyes. Cross that indistinct memory with a sleep state subconscious and standard psychological patterns and boom, alien abduction. It also explains the sensation of being lifted, examined and probed. Wow, never thought of it like that before, thanks for sharing. So do you think, abductees, are too embarrassed to say the alien slapped them on the ass too? Then they forced me to finish my spinach. If aliens are on this planet, they are likely using the ocean as a place to hide. We're not the first, we are the aliens that we're looking for. Mammals are not native to Earth, the asteroid was a massive chunk of our planet and we populated the Earth after that. Is that a theory that I believe? No, not at all. Is it a good concept for a sci-fi movie? Asterisk asterisk yes. Asterisk asterisk. It's going to blow your mind when you learn what the moon is made out of, and how it formed. Time traveling humans from the future. This could explain the Mandela effect. Every time we misremember something it's actually humans in the future going back in time and changing things tilde tilde please don't call me a conspiracy nut tilde tilde. The US military has intentionally orchestrated alien, sightings, and, kidnappings, as well as funded UFO religions and conspiracy theories, to prevent people from being taken seriously should they happen to notice some experimental planes and so forth. There are no aliens, but there are US military agents in goofy spacesuits who mutilate cattle and, probe, deranged people to encourage them to make fools of themselves. Pretty sure there are cases where this is literally confirmed. I believe when the U-2 spy plane was being developed they leaked rumors of aliens or something similar to the nearby town. Reporter Annie Jacobson documents this quite thoroughly in her book Area 51. The development of what became the State Route 71 led to a lot of UFO sightings, especially by airline pilots, and the CIA needed cover stories. 
that we are the first and or the most advanced life forms at this moment in space, time. I don't remember where I heard it, maybe some NPR program, but it's interesting to consider. We often discount the idea that we could ever be that special, but there is always the chance that we are. Someone had to be the first, that someone might just be us. I remember reading somewhere that the Earth is actually quite early, the last star will burn out 100 trillion years from now and 92% of the planets are yet to be formed. Yes, we may be the first but not necessarily the last. That there is no one else and we are those advanced aliens. The universe is still in its toddler stage and age and we are the first intelligent people. It's interesting to think how true this could possibly be. I've never considered this, and on first pass I brushed it off. But then it got me thinking. At some point, a species had to start somewhere, and what if we are the advanced aliens? We may not feel like it, and it sounds odd to say it, but it's possible. It's just like starting a new MMORPG. You may only be level 25999, but you were the first player to log on and are the one who's highest level, has the most strength, speed, etc. It feels like it's hard to believe, but one day you'll be the top player. Assuming you didn't quit the game. I think we brush it off because deep down the thought that there isn't someone more advanced scares us because we know how messed up we are and we really want someone to have it figured out for us. That they are from a breakaway human civilization that is keeping their secrets to themselves. Essentially, that some place like, Wakanda, is real. Or that Jules Verne really isn't science, fiction, it's actually science, fact. When the rest of the world was making do with steam-powered industrialization, someone figured out anti-gravity and zero-point energy from the interaction between electromagnetism and gravity. So they kept this technology for themselves, and have been zipping around the rest of us keeping an eye on things. Brian Cox's, at least that's who I heard this from first, solution to the Fermi paradox. TLDR. Any, most civilization advanced enough to get even close to interstellar travel becomes too energy intensive and destroys themselves, their planet before they get far enough for interstellar contact. Or, as they can harness huge amounts of energy and can probably fuse any element they want and manufacture anything they want, they have no need to conquer or invade. Why would they want our crappy little planet? They could just build one, or move a suitable planet closer, further away from a closer star. They might seek information, existence of new life and their stories, but that would be about it. The worrying aliens would be those that are slightly more advanced than us and happen upon a wormhole that exits very close to Earth. That would have some consequences. Or drifting rogue gray goo from a slightly more advanced civilization. Or we just retreat to an incredibly realistic virtual reality. I don't believe it, but that they live in underground caves and dwell primarily in Antarctica. I don't remember the complete theory but people say they're an advanced race adapted for life underground, and that they have advanced machinery because they have been living on the Earth longer than humans. It's the hollow Earth idea. It's been around a long time. You mean the Kong vs. Godzilla thing? The documentary, yeah. Dark forest theory. Aliens are depicted as God in religious texts. If you wanted to explore space, you'd send technology instead of risking the life of a scientist. The little gray, green men and other now cliché depictions are just biological computers that they can control and that's why they look so simplistic and unidentifiable. Reminds me of I, robot or droids. You know that trope in sci-fi shows, where they stumble upon the networks of the founders, or the ancients, or the architects. A civilization so advanced, long ago, that traveled the stars? That is us. We're seemingly alone because we're the first. Maybe they'll stumble upon us in a million years. Well that just gave me the shivers. Wonder if we'll be the destroyed ourselves with our own hubris type forerunners, or the ascended to a higher plane of existence types. Definitely the first one. We split the atom and the forethought was to use it to blow each other up with increasing magnitude. Then, we decided to make so many that if anyone decided to use one we would just end all life on Earth indiscriminately. That they're extra tempestrals, not extraterrestrials. They are some type of human evolutionary outcome from the future. It's why they look humanoid if evolution were to theoretically continue. Time travelers or dimension travelers. May explain why they aren't violent, obvious, or intrusive. They're just what humans become in X years. Just a theory but I think it holds weight. 
I had a fun theory that Earth is one of a few life-generating planets and that aliens are actually Earth-originated beings who have moved on to settle the galaxy. Any visits are them checking in on our development, and eventually we'll be advanced enough to join and make way for another wave. Not really a theory I believe, more the basis for a story. There are enough galaxies and stars to actually have your story be true, somewhere. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.